welcome back to this series on Python for DH. This is a re-recording of my previous series that it's going to be the exact same. The main difference is going to be that this one is zoomed in the way it should be thanks to a couple notifications from subscribers. So uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about a few different things. I'm not going to go through and read off this whole list, but the theme of this video is going to be data. What is data? Why is it useful? How do we uh, work with data in Python? And uh, that's going to be the main theme of it. And we're going to be talking about how to create the basic structures of data and uh, data themselves in Python over here. We're going to talk about integers, floats, strings, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. By the end of this video, you will know what all of these are. And that'll set you up for the next few videos in which we talk about each of these in more depth. And then you're also going to learn a couple basic things like how to comment things out, what that means. And uh, you're going to also learn about print function, how to actually run a very simple command in Python, but one that you're going to use every single day. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit more about uh, this, pythonhumanities.com, uh, what it is, how to use it, and so that you can kind of follow along with this series with a series of uh, both written uh, lessons. So if we go to uh, lesson number two, which is what this one is, we can see that we're going to have a video with it, which is this video right here, and some text so you can read and follow along, and then some coding exercises that you can do to kind of test your skills without having to do anything in an IDE like Adam. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video, and that's how this video series is kind of a little bit improved from the last one. So without further ado, let's just kind of jump right in. So what is data? Why is it useful? Well, data in and of itself is actually entirely useless. Data doesn't really do anything. It is only useful when we apply some kind of structure to it. And we do that by doing, uh, creating what are known as databases or things that allow for us to make data relational. Uh, so what we're going to be working with in this video is three basic kinds of data, integers, floats, and strings, and then three basic data structures, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. And we're going to talk about how these are different, how you create them in Python, and when you might want to use them. So let's jump right in. The first thing that you may notice when you look at this is that we have some gray text and some white text right here. Uh, what you're seeing here is known as a comment. So the way in which we comment something in Python is we use an ampersand or a pound sign, which is the shift button and three. And that allows us to do what's called commenting out. This allows us to leave notes to people who are reading our code, notes to ourselves for future additions to our code, really whatever you want. It's just a place to add a whole bunch of text. But if you start writing again, you'll notice that it's not commenting that out. You have to manually do this. Now you can either do an ampersand for each line, or you can hold control and add them and hit the question mark button, which is going to activate the backslash. And that'll allow you to comment out multiple rows. If it's not commented out, then Python is going to read it as a line of code. Now, this is a white piece of text, and this is only being white because I've set up syntax coloring and Atom. Play around with different syntax coloring and find the one that works for you. I highly recommend it because what syntax coloring lets you do is see very important delineations in your code, such as variables, which are going to be white, this equals, which is going to be purple, which sets up the variable, and then whatever that variable might be will change depending on what it is. So an integer and a float, are orange and a string is green. So anyways, that's what that is. So what are variables? Well, variables are what we see here. These are objects in Python that allow us to set something in memory so that we can call it later on. So if I were to print off something in Python, this is an important code, piece of code you're going to have to learn, print and then two parentheses, one open and one close. And between it, you might want to print off hello. We're not going to say hello world because we're not cliche. So if I were to run this and I'm going to run it in Atom by holding control, shift, and B. And if I were to run it, you'll see that my output down here is hello. So that's allowing me to print off 
whatever it is I want it to print off. And you'll see that I am using an open quote and a close quote. That's because this is a string or a piece of text. If I were to print off a number, I would just simply do that and no uh, quotation marks whatsoever. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go through and talk about what these things are. So an integer is a number that does not have a decimal point. The way we create an integer object in Python is we create some kind of name for it. So here I have a1 and a2, and I have 1 and 2. A float might look like to you the exact same number. 1 is very clearly 1.0, right? Well, no, the answer is no. Here we have what's known as a float or a floating number. Floats are decimal points, and they're important because computers read decimal points very differently than numbers. They're more complex to handle. So whenever you can, try to always use an integer. A float can be 1.0, 2 2.0, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2
A tuple, on the other hand, cannot be changed. Once you create a tuple, it remains that way. It will not be altered in any way, shape, or form. And this is called an immutable variable or an immutable object. So think of a tuple as a list that you can't modify. Now, you might be asking to yourself, why would you want to do this? Well, there are some times when you're writing a program where you want to make sure that something cannot be changed. And a tuple is how you're going to do that. Another thing that tuples are useful for is whenever you create a function, which we're not going to get to for a while, it's going to be lecture number 10, whenever you create a function in Python, it is going to return a tuple. And so you're going to have to know how to interact with both of these. And you're going to do them interact with them kind of similarly. But again, we're going to get to that in lectures 5 and 6. The final data structure I've got listed here is what's known as a dictionary. And we make a dictionary with these open and closed squiggly brackets. And if you're not familiar with where the squiggly bracket is, it's with the open and closed brackets right next to your enter key. It's up one and to the left one if you're using an American keyboard. And the way in which you do that is that you hold shift and you can just kind of create that there. So how is a dictionary different? Well, you should be able to see immediately how it's different. You've got one item right here, which is known as a key, and then you have a colon followed by this item here, which is known as a value. So the way in which this is different is that you can make uh, pieces of information explicitly relatable. So I can say something like last name, and then I can say something like Mattingly. Wonderful. <laughs> that allows for you to create structure within your Python script by taking something that is uh, common to a lot of different people, a last name, and making it relational to something that is unique to a specific person. So my last name. That is kind of how you work with dictionaries in Python, why they're important. So now let's talk about how we can kind of print these off. Rather than having to print off uh, this dictionary every single time, I can simply print off F. So what is going to happen is when I print off F, the Python script is going to run. It's going to read this item in memory. It's going to create this object, and then it's going to print it off. So let's try to work back and see what's going to happen. Take a moment and pause. Read this line and think about what might happen if I try to print off F. And we've got an error. Wonderful. C1 is not defined. I'm not sure why that error happened. That was very, very strange. Uh, didn't do anything to change it. It just happened to give me an error. So if something happened and it got corrupted when I ran the script the first time. But if this is what you predicted to happen, this is the correct response. What has happened is we've printed off F. It's gone into memory, found F, this object here, and then it's looked at the dictionary and said, okay, we've got C1 is a key with a value of A1 and C2 is a key with a value of A2. So now what the Python script has to do is it has to go back into memory and figure out what C1 is, what A1 is, what C2 is right here, and what A2 is. And then it just simply puts those in. So objects are items that can be stored in memory that can then be called back and manipulated and worked with at a later date. So this is essentially how to actually think about what is happening in Python. Work through it mentally. Go through and think about what is going to happen in your script before you even run your code. This is very good practice and over time, you will write 20, 30, 40 lines of code and not really have to print it off the test to see if it runs. Uh, you'll just know that it'll work because you'll start thinking in logical steps. So that's going to be very important. There is one other thing I want to talk about right now before we end this video, and that is going to be this concept here of the start thinking about placement. So if I wanted to print off D, which is a list, 
I could print off D right like this. I'd run it, and I have this output here. So one, two, one, Billy, and then a list of one and two. What is What I can do, and we're going to talk about this in much more depth in lecture number 16, is I can put these open and square brackets next to D. And in this open or square bracket, I can put an integer. I'm going to put the integer 0. What this is going to do is it's going to go up to D and select that particular number in this list. You know what? I'm going to select 1 first. Might have ruined this question with already kind of spoiling the potential answer, but think to yourself, if I run this and I tell it to grab the item at position 1, which item in this list do you think it will grab? 1, 2, 1, Billy, or that list? Let's run it and find out. It's grabbed A2, which is, as you remember up here, the integer of 2. Why has that happened? The reason why that's happened is because in most programming language languages, 0 is going to be the first item in a list. And so this is something that you're going to have to start getting familiar with. When you're thinking about Python, always make sure that you think about the first iteration, the first item, as 0 and not 1. So that's going to be really all I want to cover in this video. Let's go over to pythonhumanities.com, though, and kind of look through what you might be able to use here. So if you go to pi4dh course, you scroll down to part one, you'll find lesson two here. And this is the old video. It's going to be updated after I post this. But if we go down, you can read a lot of what I've talked about in this video. You can find more information on floats, integers, strings, etc. And you can even start playing around with the print function on this main page. After you've done that, go to the coding exercise. And I recommend trying to test yourself. See if you can do all this. And I highly encourage you not to move forward in this series until you're able to just memorize integer, float, string, list, tuple, and dictionary, and how to form them in Python. If you can do that, you're going to be good to go to the next lesson. And just if you want to test yourself, there is a lesson two quiz that you can kind of go through. I think it's five simple questions just to kind of test yourself to make sure you remember some of the key concepts. And if you get lost, don't worry, there is a cheat sheet. <laughs> so you can click there and find it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.